spirit. The second reason is for discernment. Discernment. Look at somebody said discernment. <sighs> discernment is a spiritual characteristics in the Bible that gives you sound judgment for perceiving difference between right and wrong and difference between good and evil. Someone that has discernment to step into a place and it's not about what they told you. Your spirit to pick on things. I didn't say, you know, there's some people when they come to a place, everything is wrong. That's not what I said. When they see someone, I say, I don't like this sister, but I seems she's very confident. It's not confident, it's pride. You know, there are some people that just, they just, I don't like her hairstyle. I don't, you know, some people, that's not discernment. Discernment is when someone say, yeah, you know, if it's yeah inside their heart. Somebody says, sir, you know, if it's sir inside their heart. Somebody say, Ma, you discernment will tell you. And you know, the function of discernment is so that you can know what to do. Discernment is when you're going for an interview and the Lord will say to your spirit man, this and this and this area to sit on. That's discernment. Discernment is so that you'll be able to, when I used to work in sales, when I, I, I started um, work here, I used to work in sales. When someone walks in, I had target. So I get salary, but then I get bonus if I sell more. And so someone walks in, maybe to buy a phone and all of that. I would discern what is going on in the person's life. Someone walks in and I just, there and then, I just discern that. Okay, maybe this one, something, something like that. Oh, Holy Spirit, what could it be? What I want to make this sales today, what could it be? And I will start talking in the line that the person wants to hear and they'll buy what they didn't plan to buy. Someone will come and buy phone. You buy phone, you buy case, you buy insurance. I have never bought insurance till I came to UK and I have to buy for car. That, that's the only reason. And this church, we have to insure it. That's the only reason. Other than that, I don't want insurance. But I sold, I will sell everything to you. Why? I will discern. God will tell me. And there were many of them. There's one woman. She, I sold to her. She went, brought her, brought her husband, brought her son-in-law, brought her son, brought, as in brought everybody. They are on that sales table. At least 20 to 30 people gave their life to Jesus. Jesus. By discernment. Hello, I am comfort. I'm a pastor. No, it was discernment. Every time you'll be able to say what the person's problem is, and you can lead them to Jesus. If you're able to say and look at someone and say, Ah, oh, I know you are going through this. How did you know? He said, The Holy God just told me something. Ah. She came to church, her daughter came to church, was a single mom. Her sister and her sister's family came to church. This was that lady was the first person that gave church a seed to buy a property. Discernment can help you win many things. That is why you must walk in the spirit. That is why you must do what? Walk in the spirit. It will help you. It will help you navigate through our scriptures. A lot of people had discernment. Daniel had discernment. Daniel did what had discernment. It was that discernment that helped him in interpretation of dreams. If not, his head would have been cut off. There are problems in your office. There are problems in the society. There are problems around you that responds to discernment. If you must discern, you must walk in the spirit. You cannot be a fleshy Christian and live in a realm that is above all. If you want to be in a realm where others will be marveled at what you do, you must walk in the spirit and ensure that the flesh is put under subjection. The body is the enemy you have because it's the vehicle that the devil uses to your spirit man. Somebody say, my body is under subjection to the word of God. Let me give you one scripture. One scripture. Glory be to God. Can you please look at the book of First John? No, let's do Hebrews, please. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. How can you have this discernment? 
I said why you did the fruit the, the to live the life in the spirit. The first thing is to worship. The second thing is discernment. How can you get this discernment? But strong means belong to them that are full age. Even those who buy reason of use have the have have the sense sense senses in have senses, their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. See that scripture is saying that it is possible to have your senses exercised to discern what both good and evil. How do you have your senses exercised? You know, there's something that replaces food that can help your senses exercise. Guess what it is? Fasting. Anything that is opposite of what your body wants can help you to have your senses exercise. Does your body want food or not? It always wants food. But if you can subject yourself like every first, first second and third of the month sir so please take note of the month every first second and third of the month we are going to be fasting and praying into the month this year. Hallelujah. If you can subject your body and say body shut up spirit be awake be alive if you can do that for food for whatever it is that distracts you the most then you can have your senses exercised glory be to god number two thing is prayer now when i say fasting i must say the bible says something he said this moment not when the, the the disciples came to jesus and say you you've been doing this miracle we don't understand why we can't do it jesus looked at them and said this particular issue go ahead not except by praying and fasting yes he may go for the other person by them just walking around but in your case it might be that it has to be prayer and fasting someone told me but my friends do not fast before they they, they before they go married i said they don't come from your lineage they don't come from your tribe in fact yesterday i was listening to a, a, a very strong man of god and he said something do you know that different tribes have different grace Yes. Why did the Bible say the sons of Issachar understood the times? So, some people can go into a lineage that they don't struggle a bit spiritually. That's why you can create that lineage for your family. You can create that lineage for your children. The things you struggle, the things that your parents struggle, you cannot see them if you sit down with God. And so fasting is one. But then praying how can you have your senses exercise? If not by saying, I'll go and read artificial intelligence. I will understand that. You will, at, at, you will understand artificial things. You will not understand spirit things. Your senses must be exercised. The third way is through the study of the word of God. How can you discern when something is fake or not? When you know the original. The original is from the word of God. Some of you, there's nothing you respect like they say a prophetic word came. I'll die in three hours. You pull like that thing. They say a prophetic word came. It's my mother's 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 great grandfather. The people like prophetic, you don't sit down on the word. Prophecy should confirm what God has told you, sir. Not to tell you one strange thing. And say, say, because we are lazy Christians. You don't want to sit on the word. You can be as accurate as anything in your spiritual work if you fast, if you pray, if you study the word. Some of us, you, you can just 50, 52 minutes. Let prayer time come. They have not finished. When is the ending? This is taking too long. Ago. What are we even praying about? Life is not that serious. That I bet I'm tired. But when you want to just, your phone will be hot. The team will be telling you hot, very hot. You still be gisting. But you don't know that you can actually weaken your spiritual senses. Discernment can help you to escape destruction. Discernment can help you to go right instead of left. Discernment can shorten your journey. The children of Israel are like many Christians. They had no discernment. They had no discernment. When they get stuck at some point, they say, Moses, take us back to where we are coming from. Anytime 
you think of going back to your last relationship, going back to your last tradition, going back, let's go back, let's go back. Yeah, like the children of Israel. They're not thinking of forward movement. Why? Because they could eat small, small food. They'll hit their head, they'll eat food. They'll hit their head, they'll eat. They'll say, that is better. That is better than, you know, you know eh, this one, all that is diabetic. That one is better. God will help you in the name of Jesus. Discernment is such that you may not be seeing what you want, but the word of God says that this and this will happen in your life. So you are hanging on the word of God. Discernment is such that you may not see joy where you are, but you know that joy comes when? In the morning. Discernment is such that your body may be feeling sick, but you know that the word of God says by the stripes of Jesus, you are made whole. Discernment said, None shall lack their mates, none shall be barren. So, therefore, it will be so for you. That's discernment. Sitting on the word of God, praying, fasting. Do you have family prayer time? Do you have family fasting time? That's why the enemy will slap you on the left. Tomorrow, he'll slap you on the right. Next week, he'll kick you on the butt. God will help us in the name of Jesus. He said that they had their senses. They had their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. It's the discernment that will make you know that this school might be a school that everybody like, but this is not my school. See, let me tell you. Discernment will make you know when a teacher is advising your child away from destiny. Yes. There was a counsel Shikana's teacher gave us. When we came back home, we said, Yeah, it's true. I think it makes sense. We're going in that direction. Then one day I told my husband, I said, Honey, it's a lie. The Lord just told me it's not that that's not what it's supposed to be. That is not this is a lie. It can never be a problem that someone is smarter than all everybody in the school. It's not a problem. No, it's not a problem if my child is in primary two. And in, it has the highest score in the whole school. It's not a problem. It's the voice of the devil. I said, oh, guys, it's a lie. This thing, we sat down, I said, okay, okay, okay. We are not going to listen to that counsel. Long and short of the story, the man is not, is far from Christianity. I'm sure it's one of the ones they recruited to carry out witchcraft, witchcraft activity. Let me tell us something. We must descend. You must be able to descend. Someone say, ah, your son is not good in English. He said, lie. Someone say, your child is too good. How can that be a problem? So your child is, okay, carry him now from the primary too. And make him start teaching others. <laughs> Since, no, why is he a problem? You must descend. Because we say, teacher will say, his more experience is white, is this, is that. But they are taking you out of what this is meant to tell you, step into a place. I said, this school is not my children's school. Ah, this head teacher cannot. When I went to their school, the first time before me and pastor went, I stepped in. I went to a Catholic school close to them. And I went to this school there. As I came in the, entered the Catholic school, I saw darkness. I felt darkness. How, how can a Catholic school? So when I went, the first approach, I think I went with Sister Sandy. The first thing the head teacher told us, made me confirm the darkness I felt. She just said, oh, you want the children? Oh, we really, really love to have them there. It's just that it's not as Christian as you think. Because while I was coming there, was I said, Christians, it's going to be better. She, when she just said that, I said, oh, I confirm. No need to. She said, let's take from I said, no, don't worry, don't worry. Then we drove to where we... When I entered this one, ah, I felt that it's not that there were no principalities, but they can be put under subjection. Amen? Anywhere you come to the spirit of discernment must be functional. There are some people put on assignment to stop you, to stop your destiny. You see what the man was saying? The lady lived with her. It wasn't, I mean, they were not related. They just lived together. And maybe I just don't like her. She's praying too much. I had a flatmate before my husband came. Her problem was I pray. His problem, I mean, I pray too much. Um, these people, people come, I'm a pastor, people come for counseling. So the footfall in our house is heavy. He said he didn't want it. And you know, some of you stand there and fight him till he packs out. Say, I will show him I'm a woman. 
I didn't need to show him anything. Me, I just left. Amen? To a place where I can continue my ministry. Glory be to God. Discernment will help you know that this person coming close to me is danger. Receive the spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus. Not every woman must be married. I'm not talking to only cutters. I have faith that there are many single people here. Amen? Not every man must be married. Not men, every woman must be. You say, I like her. She's so beautiful. Oh God. You may be going after Jezebel. The Lord help you in the name of Jesus. He says something, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Let me read it very quickly. He says, For the word of God is quick. What does the word of God do? Is what? Can you say it loud? The word of God is. Okay, there are no people in church. Let's close and go. For the word of God is what? You are acting like we are two. For the word of God is what? And then he said, it is powerful. It is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner. Is the word of God that will help you to discern. You tell me that, I'm going for my, my company. They don't have it in the Bible. You don't understand. When you study the Bible, your eyes will open. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. The Bible said that the eyes of my understanding will be enlightened. Anytime you study the word of God, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened. So you are going, there was one time when I was in second in university. A few years after I got saved. A year or so after I got saved. I can step out of my house. I have a prayer session that ends at 12 and I have another one that starts at 5 and I'll step out maybe around 8 eventually to go to school and I'll come out of my room and I'll be seeing different things like God forbid as pastor says, I can see tortoise on his head I'll be seeing I'll, I'm walking, you think it's human beings that are walking a lot of people are walking with some people you see vulture on their chest so, so a lot more people are more possessed than you ever think I'll just, I'll just be seeing strange things I'm like what's going on I w- there is a way you descend that you'll be seeing everything Somebody will be talking to me, I'll be seeing what the person meant, not what they are saying. Why? When you sit on the word of God and pray, God will open your eyes. Somebody place hands on your eyes and say, Lord Jesus, open my eyes, open my ears, in Jesus' name.